Hello, this is Bronwyn Ailey, local food systems and small farms educator for University of Illinois Extension. And I'm bringing you the seventh weekly update of my video blog I, that I call Local Food Happenings at Dixon Springs. And for this week's update, I'll give you a, a quick overview of the hydroponic crops and their progress for this week. And we'll also have a discussion on a uh, disease that we've discovered in our determinate tomato cultivar trial. And so that'll be the main focus for this week's uh, update and video log. As we look at our hydroponic cucumber plants, you can see that they have definitely jumped in growth from last week. And we are seeing several flowers on here from the plants. Get in a little closer here. We're also seeing small fruit in there. So they are really progressing. Um, we have, I believe, uh, four different varieties in here, and three of the four varieties are blooming heavily and setting their fruit. Uh, this fourth variety, just a little bit behind, uh, the flowers are there, and I see, I'm see i starting to see tiny amounts of fruit, um, not quite to the size of the other variety. Um, but, but all of the plants are, are growing very well and, and uh, growing, growing as we would expect them to. Pan over. To our hydroponic tomatoes and peppers. You see they're all growing as well. We're starting to see small green fruit on the majority of the varieties on the tomatoes um, from the first clusters. And these are continuing to get clipped and suckered as the plants are growing. And you can see we've got lots of lots of uh, flowers setting on on these indeterminate tomatoes as well. We'll just quickly pan through and look at the growth of our lettuce table. So this is uh, the second week that they have been second full week that they've the plants have been in the lettuce table, and you can see they're really Moving along to you, again, the pak choy is, is uh, growing really well. Spinach is a little bit slower than the lettuce in the pak choy, but it's also, also coming on. As for our hydroponic strawberries in the vertical stacks, I've already gone through today and Harvested the fruit that was ready and and popped off any of the runners. I just wanted to give you a quick glance at the the growth and how the the, the foliage is darkening up and and again how we have we're in various stages of of fruit production from flowering to to ripe fruit. And we'll also pan over to our rail system with our herbs and edible flowers. Everything's growing growing really well in the in the rail system here. I think we've gone through and deadheaded the tops of of many of these different uh, plants. We don't want them to be setting flower. We want to just have them uh, doing more vegetative growth. It's good to see right here our rosemary. It was just very, very small plants coming out. Weren't sure that they were going to, to come on and thrive, but they've really started growing. And it looks like the lavender's doubled or tripled in size since last week, so it's responding well in this production system as well. down here to the very end and 
look at, we put a couple of little patio cherry tomato plants in this rail system. And uh, this is a, a, really, a really fun little plant. It's very compact, this tomato plant. But it's got lots of flowers. It's setting lots of fruit clusters. Haven't picked ripe fruit off of it yet, but we'll we'll see what see what what happens when they ripen and what the flavor's like. But I don't know if this gives you a sense of the height of these. They're they're not very big plants at all. Um, like I said, very compact, but setting lots of fruit. So it'll be interesting to see what these do this season. information I wanted to share with you this week on the tomato uh, variety trial, cultivar trial for the determinant tomatoes in the uh, in-ground raised bed tunnel here at Dixon Springs. Um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about a disease that we have started that cropped up um, symptom-wise the end of last week and upon investigation and some research uh, it appears that we have what is called tomato pith necrosis. Uh, this is not a very common plant uh, tomato disease. It mainly occurs in high tunnel or greenhouse production. Uh, generally, it's not a very economically damaging disease. Um, doesn't appear to be spread easily between plants, although it can because it is a bacterial disease. Um, but the conditions that favor development of this disease include cool temperatures, high humidity, and an ex excessive fertilizer. So the, the low temperatures and the high humidity would definitely um, be how I would describe the weather pattern that we've been experiencing here in southern Illinois for the last few weeks. Um, I believe at this point the overall fertility that has been applied to this planting, I think we've put on about 85 pounds to the acre of nitrogen. So um, the one thing that we can control out of those three factors would be the amount of fertilizer that we put on. So I believe that we will hold off on fertilizer application uh, next week and see if we can't give these plants a chance to to um, kind of grow out of this. In reading about the disease, um, it can cause the plants to wilt, which you can see this plant is starting to wilt down. We see necrotic brown lesions. In the, at the stem. You can also see it here on the top of the leaf petiole. You see those black sunken lesions. And sometimes we might think that we could see this where strings were impacting or making a, a uh, open area on the stem, but we also see these necrotic spots developing in areas where the string has not touched. As an example here, right there. And earlier in the week I did remove four plants from the planting because they were extremely wilted and didn't appear to you that they would be growing out of it. This plant, um, while it's looking very wilted, I also see still see some signs of potential um, good growth on this plant and so I'm not quite ready to remove it from the planting as of yet. And also if you look right beside it is a perfectly healthy plant. And we move over here to this row we see healthy plant and then these next two plants definitely are a little bit more wilted down and as we take a closer look we can see that they are also 
showing the symptoms of the tomato pith necrosis. Some pretty classic simple symptoms. Here. This is the first time that I have seen this disease in our high tunnel tomatoes. And so I, I don't think that it's a very common disease at all. I just think that a combination of environmental factors and possibly a little bit of fertility has uh, brought this situation on. And so we'll continue to monitor that. And one other thing that we will be doing to this planting um, before the uh, this afternoon actually um, is we will be making a spray application uh, for botrytis gray mold. Uh, we we had issues with gray mold in the planting last year and we want to make sure that we can stay ahead of that and as you can see we we have quite a bit of bloom action happening on the tomato plants now and so we want to get a spray on that can work as a preventative um, in case of of botrytis issues and some of the same weather conditions that have brought on this tomato pith necrosis are also favorable for uh, botrytis gray mold in tomatoes and so we're, we want to uh, hopefully help prevent uh, potential other diseases coming into the planting and we will also be putting on the third string on these tomatoes the first of the week. Um, but that is where we are at on the determinate tomato cultivar trial here at Dixon Springs in week seven.